Okay, and we are live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the uh, the Solar MOOC webinar for Thursday, April nineteenth. Uh, we have a pretty small class today, um, and uh, because it's so small, I'm going to go ahead and right off the bat unmute everyone. Okay, so uh, I'll do this one at a time. Actually. Um, I need Sarah, to do it. because you have yes, you have the host control, so uh, you're going to have okay. to uh, go into that attendee list where it says uh, view all attendees. Okay. Click that. Got it. And then uh, we can select all and then unmute all. All right. Go one at a time. And uh, if there's any I didn't background. See it, so I feel like <laughs> Okay. Okay, everyone's <laughs> so, uh, in. You'll just, have to, you'll, you'll just have to be aware if there's, if there's background noise that starts, you'll want to go in and mute the source of the background noise. And you'll know the source because there'll be little green bars that shoot out of the little phone handle thing, indicating okay. that the background noise is coming from that location. So, okay. hello, Rand. Hello, Victoria. Hello, William. Uh, you guys are the three hello. attendees for this uh, webinar. Oh, and we've got uh, Seth coming in now as well. Um, your uh, your voice is live now. Um, if you if you have a, a question during the course of the uh, um, uh, presentation, um, the the best way to ask the question would be through the chat window. So you should have a chat function that you can use um, to to send a question to uh, to Sarah or me or all participants and. Uh, and then, depending on the nature of the question, we may, you know, uh, initiate a dialogue with you uh, about that. So, um, <clears throat> but for now, uh, we're ready to begin. Uh, we're recording. Um, my name is Richard Stovall. I'm the CEO of uh, Soul Power People, and uh, we've got uh, uh, Sarah Raymer here as well. She's a training director for uh, Soul Power People, and today we're going to cover. Um, it's an advanced PV topic that deals with uh, inner row shaping. Um, and I want to mention that uh, this course, uh, this, this class, this webinar uh, is, is pretty specific to a topic, and uh, a topic that we are currently in development um, uh, uh, for a micro course. So uh, the thought is that if we can make this succinct, condensed, uh, meaningful uh, webinar around this topic that uh, we can, as part of that micro course, um, assign the uh, 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 this watch this this video if it's recorded or the live. You won't actually have to come back and watch it, but that uh, the time that you spend in this webinar now can actually count towards the credit towards the course in terms of trackable hours and. Why is that meaningful? Well, um, uh, you know, for these micro courses, as they're developed, uh, they, you know, will be between two and six or eight hours uh, worth of uh, credit. Um, uh, you can take them for free. It's a formalized course where you actually go in, you enroll, you uh, do reading assignments, watch videos, do problem sets, and take a quiz. And uh, the conclusion of the, the course, you can. If you chose to uh, uh, utilize these for continuing education credits or um, uh, uh, towards your, your um, requirement for advanced training, um, retroactively pay for the course uh, via uh, uh, it, by purchasing the certificate of completion. So this is our way of taking this free global solar education and 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 uh, uh, being able to offer it all for free, yet uh, uh, monetize it so that we can, you know, support the infrastructure and, and uh, uh, um, uh, justify uh, financially doing it through the sale of continuing education units. So I hope that makes sense to everybody, um, and you understand the, the the vision and the promise of this this platform in terms of being able to bring uh, free solar education to the world. Um, and only paying for those credits that you need for some practical purpose, uh, like uh, sitting for a test or for continuing education units or, or whatever. So, 
Uh, that being said, we're going to dive right into this. We've got uh, Sarah Raymer who's going to take you through the, the first part of this lecture. Um, know that uh, this is all uh, being recorded, uh, so you'll be able to watch this again at another time. Um, and uh, if anybody isn't able to, to be here live, they'll be able to uh, go to our website and watch the recording. Uh, it should be posted later tonight or at the latest tomorrow. Um, so with that being said, Sarah, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Um, so we've gone over some of these before in the earlier MOOCs. So I apologize if it's a double take for anyone, um, but I tried to give it a little variety and um, add a little bit to it. Um, so basically, we're covering inner row shading. Um, that, let's see, I thought I could click on this and it would, there we go. Okay, so the, basically, the main parts of inner row shading, the things that you need to understand in order to be able to design to prevent shading between PV module rows is uh, a few the things that are, that are listed here. So we have the altitude and azimuth angles, uh, how to read and find a solar sun path chart, uh, some basic trigonometry uh, formulas, primarily the so ka toa which is sine, cosine, and tangent. We'll go over that. Uh, and then lastly, how to apply those three things to the concepts of, uh, well, to the problem sets themselves and how to go through an inner row shading uh, analysis in order to avoid that terrible shading problem. Um, that's going to be, that's going to include an arctan function as well as designing on a sloped roof. Um, so starting with the solar azimuth and altitude angle. Um, I'll just read this out. Basically, there are two primary numbers provided by a solar sun path chart that are required to do inner row shading calculations, um, the solar altitude and the solar azimuth. So the solar altitude is how high in the sky the sun is in relation to the horizon, uh, whereas the solar azimuth is where the sun is in the sky in relation to a reference direction. Now, in, in solar, we always use south because that is the ideal direction uh, in the northern hemisphere, that is. So in the northern hemisphere, the sun is always in the southern part of the sky. So we design an array facing south as much as possible. Um, here is a graphic representation of that. Um, you see here, can you see my mouse moving? On the screen? Yes, we see your mouth. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so the first consideration uh, in the formula and uh, in general is going to be the solar altitude angle. So that we see here, uh, this solar altitude angle being that at zenith, if the sun was at zenith, that would be 90 degrees straight up in the air right above us or as close to it as, as possible. Um, so this is, say, a 45 degree altitude angle. Um, the other angle we're really concerned with is the solar azimuth angle. Um, I would say based on zero being here and this being a 90 degree angle, that so we've got about a 45 degree azimuth angle in this diagram as well. Here's a little sketch I did because this was one of the things that I, I couldn't get my head around until I actually like went outside and started talking about it. <laughs> so I drew, did this little doodle to explain how this works. Um, so here, this is north to south. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Uh, the altitude angle is the, is the altitude from the sun to the horizon. Um, you would, uh, this is how high the sun is in the sky. The azimuth angle is how far it is in the sky from a direction south. So that's this angle. Uh, I did the math on this. So the solar altitude angle here is looks at about 30 degrees. And the solar azimuth angle is uh, negative 40. So that's negative because in the west, it's an, a negative azimuth. Um, we don't go by the 0 to 360 full circle with solar applications. We do 0 to 180 um, negative and positive. Um, so I, I did the math on this, and I looked at a 30-degree um, solar sun path chart. And according to a 30-degree north solar sun path chart, 
uh, that would put us in, the, in that image at uh, 2.45 in the afternoon. So, <laughs> so what we can assume from that is that this surfer is not in Texas. He's in a different place in the world. And I'll, I'll just give that to you as a demonstration. So we have a solar altitude angle of 30, solar azimuth angle of negative 40. So here we have the solar altitude angle of 30 meeting at a solar azimuth angle of negative 45. That's going to put us right about here. And that will, we can see it's between 2 and 3 p.m. So not 30 degrees north latitude where that guy is. So that's the first lesson on how to read the solar sun path chart. Here's some more examples. A lot of you are probably familiar with this. Um, we have winter solstice is December. We have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Um, in June, on the summer solstice, the solar altitude angle is 84 degrees. That means it's close to directly up in the sky, right above us. Um, uh, at noon, uh, on December 21st, the solar azimuth angle is 36 degrees. So it's quite a bit lower in the sky at noon. Um, that's still the maximum solar exposure we'll get in the, in the winter time. Um, over here, we have some more examples. 11 a.m. on April 21st, as well as um, August 21st, because the sun sort of rocks back and forth in the sky, so we can see the uh, solar altitude angle is 66 degrees. Over here, we can see at 3 p.m. on April 21st and August 21st, the solar altitude angle is 44 degrees. Um, and then uh, also at 1.20 p.m. on February, it's the same thing, because this is February and o October. Did I get that right? <laughs> April 21st and August 21st. January, February. I think I've got my numbers wrong there. No, I don't. Three, March, April. So it comes down here. So that's 3 p.m. All right. Here's another example just to give you an idea of how uh, latitudes uh, really change things. The uh, 36 degrees at the winter solstice when you're at 30 degrees north right here. Going to 45 degrees north, that's going to bring it all the way down to 21. So even less solar exposure um, as you head north. Um, if you want a solar sun path chart for exactly where you are in the world, it's not hard to get one. Um, you can just go to the, this website, which we'll go to right now, and I'll show you how to do it. Um, I called um, a gentleman there who was very, very helpful. Uh, I think his name was Frank. Uh, and if you call the number on the uh, University of Oregon website, they're very kind and helpful, and they'll explain everything to you if you're, if you're not understanding their chart. Um, he told me that, okay, let me get, not get ahead of myself. Let me go here. I'm going to get one of these for you. Uh, all you need to do is put in your latitude. You put in your latitude here, say we're going to do 40 degrees. That's all you need to do. Or you can put in your zip code. You're going to scroll down here, and then you have to enter a code. And then it will give you a solar sun path chart click here. Now it's going to give you a really big one that's hard hard to read. So what you do um, is you go to zoom bit to page and then rotate it. There you have your solar sun fast chart for latitude 40. Um, a little trick that, I, that uh, they explained to me over the phone uh, if you are in the southern hemisphere, you're going to use a negative uh, latitude. Also, if you want the numbers at the bottom of the solar sun fest chart to read like the ones we were looking at before with zero in the center, you can use negative. This is what's going to happen. Let's give it a negative to see what happens. Follow through. It keeps your number. Click here, 
We're going to get that picture. Zoom fit to my page and then rotate. Now it gives us the numbers. This is a little backwards. As you can see, PM's on this side, AM's on this side, which doesn't really, for this, this would be for the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, but as far as being able to read numbers and not having to add and subtract, you can see that the numbers down here go from zero up, whereas on the uh, on the original chart that they give you with the positive latitude, it'll go zero to 360 across, and then you have to add and subtract, and it gets a little hairy. All right. Now to the scary part. Knowing where the sun is is fun. I think um, the trigonometry is the part that is uh, frightful to me. But once you do it a few times, it's not scary anymore. <laughs> Um, this I got right off of Google. Even people at NASA need to know trigonometry. They have to learn it too. Um, we're not going to really be working with these crazy angles, so we kind of ignore that one, except we do know that the sum of three angles is 180 degrees in any triangle. Right triangles are really what we're concerned with. Um, 90 degrees is always at this angle in the corner. Uh, with a, it's a 90 degree angle, like a T square. Um, and then uh, hypotenuse is the longest side. And then these are your other sides, which become the adjacent and opposite, depending on which angle um, you're uh, referencing, which will be coming up soon. Here we go. So, so katoa. This is a really nice uh, mnemonic that helps us to remember these formulas. Um, basically, um, it's sine, uh, sine of some angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of some angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of some angle is opposite over adjacent. Um, when, you're, when you have an angle, such as this one, um, this is going to determine which is your opposite. The opposite is the one across from the angle. Same here. It, so they switch depending on where your angle is. The angle theta determines which side is the opposite or adjacent. Now we know which lines, uh, we can define which side is what. This is just what I was reading with the mnemonic. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, OH. Cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, now which one do you use and how do you use it? I always write this out. Anytime I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm a visual person and I like to see what I'm working with, and it helps me to, to determine really quickly which formula I need. So I just write out so katoa, and then I look at what I have. I have my angle degree, and it's 30. Um, so we know that's what's going to go in this part of the equation. Um, then we know we have the I, we have the adjacent. Um, so we can underline or highlight or circle whatever the one that we have. So now we know we can use one of these formulas because we only have one variable. We can use this one to solve for the hypotenuse. We can use this one to solve for the opposite. To solve for the hypotenuse, use the cosine. You, and this is how the formula works. Cosine of the angle equals the adjacent 12 over the hypotenuse. Or to solve for the opposite, the tangent of the angle 30 or, yeah, tangent of the angle equals the opposite over adjacent, which is 12. So that's how we uh, fill our numbers into these formulas. Uh, again, I write it out. I mark the, the, the value that I do have so I know which formulas I can use. Which formula is used to solve for the opposite length? If we want to solve for the opposite, uh, does anyone want to chime in and say which formula that you would use? No? If we want to solve for the opposite. Yeah, so 
We have the hypotenuse. We need the opposite. So we're going to use the so. I, I wrote this wrong. I apologize. That should be an H. <laughs> I thought I'd gone through this enough times to catch all the errors, but I missed one. So which formula is used to solve for the adjacent? We have the hypotenuse. We need the adjacent. So we use this one. All right, so this is us working it out. Which formula is used to solve for the opposite length? Um, we have the hypotenuse. We need the opposite, opposite so we use sine. Um, the way this is going to work with the calculator. Oops, I made everything go away. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm not going to do it with the calculator then. <laughs> Um, well, I'll show you how to use the calculator, but not right this very second. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 30 degrees equals opposite over uh, the opposite over 30, which is the hypotenuse. So when we plug it into a calculator, um, sine over sine of 30. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, we go 30 and hit the sine button. Whoops. That didn't work. <laughs> oh, I have my shift key down. That's the problem. And that's our, it's that easy. It's really just punching the right numbers. So 30 sine is 0.5. So we have 0.5 is opposite over 30. Now we're going to cancel out the solve for the O. We multiply each both sides by 30, which 0.5 times 30 is 15. So then we know that the um, uh, the opposite is going to be 15, where the hypotenuse is 30. Over here, it's the same type of deal. We have the hypotenuse, and we're solving for the adjacent, so we use the cosine formula, this one. Um, cosine of 30 is uh, the adjacent divided by 30. Um, I don't like fractions, so uh, I don't use them. <laughs> Sometimes people turn these over and multiply one over something, and you'll see that somewhere along the way, I'm sure, and that might work for you. But in this case, we, we don't even need to do that. We just a divided by 30, so we're going to multiply by 30. Again, we get the cosine of cosine of 30 is 0.867. So to demonstrate that, 30 cosine 0.866. So we round. Um, Actually, it should be 0 0.866, not 867, um, times 30. So the adjacent length is 26.01. All right. Whoops, I missed a funny slide. Um, <laughs> so then we were like, ah, more something harder. Yeah, um, it's really not that bad, though. Uh, I like that picture, though. So uh, next step, inner row shading. So how are we going to use all of those things together to decide how far apart we place our module rows? Here's the problem. And I, again, apologize if any of you have been through this already, but it can't hurt to do it again. Um, and and there will be more examples to come and more in the MOOC and, and more uh, in the course if you decide to go through it, which, again, will be free. Um, so the question is, you're designing a ground mount PV array at 30 degrees north latitude with multiple rows facing true south. Uh, the tilt of the modules are 20 degrees, the width of the modules are 39 inches, and they will be installed in a landscape layout. Um, what is the closest distance the rows of the module can be and not cause any shade during the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m.? So what we're really looking at here is a solar path, sun path chart for 30 degrees north. The modules are at a 20 degree tilt, 39 inches wide, and this is the time period that we're looking at that we're going to need to read off the solar sun path chart. First of all, we use a basic trigonometry formula here. We have the angle theta. And we have the hypotenuse. We need the opposite, uh, opposite, so we're going to use the sine function. So 
sine uh, of some angle is opposite over hypotenuse. There's that so, S-O-H right there. Uh, plug it in on the uh, end of the calculator. You push 20 and then the sine function button um, to get this number. And then opposite over 39, you're going to multiply each side by 39, which brings us to 13.34. Um, once we have the height of the module, which is the opposite, uh, we can then determine, uh, start determining the length of the shadow. So when the sun shines down, uh, this is a solar altitude angle right here. The, 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 the height, um, the height of the sun in the sky from the horizon. One. Okay. Hmm. Slowly now. All right. So, um, well, okay. So the the question that I have in there said eight to four, and I'm afraid that I may have tried to be specific in this and change this, and I need to take that out. We're not using this time period, so ignore that. I apologize. <clears throat> okay, so we've got to use the shortest day of the year, or maybe we are doing eight to four. I'm I'm getting a little stirred up. <laughs> okay, so so the shortest day of the Sarah, year is September twenty right. first. What's that? Uh, you've got it right. Um, the the okay. time of the day is eight to four, but it didn't say which day of the year, so we assume that it's the shortest day of December twenty first. Right. Okay. So. Worst case scenario, um, the lowest the sun is going to be in the sky is here, and that is the longest shadow. So we have to be concerned with this. Um, and then we did 8 to 4. So we look at 4 p.m. right here, which is even with 8. And the altitude angle is 12 degrees. All right, so we know the opposite and we have the angle. Now we want to solve for the adjacent, which is the length of the shadow, and that's going to leave us using the tangent function. Um, so we see tangent, uh, opposite, adjacent. So, uh, uh, so the tangent of 12 is 0.21255. Let's pull that up one more time. 12, tangent, 2125, um, equals the opposite distance, which is 13.34 over the adjacent. So that ends up being uh, coming out to the adjacent. When we, we, we work out and simplify the algebra, uh, it ends up being equal to the adjacent is 13.34 inches divided by 0.21255. Um, this is where I was talking about fractions. What was that? No, I hear I heard two inches somewhere, but <laughs> okay. So. This is where uh, it's, we kind of skipped a step in my mind because what I would have done is I would have multiplied by the A, put the A over here, and then I would have divided then both sides by 21255 because um, it just makes sense. I've got to see it all uh, fall into place that way personally. But what it really comes down to is the opposite distance divided by the, uh, the tangent of the degree 12 which brings us to the adjacent distance being 62.76 inches. But that's not all. There's one more step. Let's see, I don't want to skip a slide. All right. So here's the, the um, adjacent that we just figured out, the length of the shadow from the previous slide. We need to know this last angle between the module rows. That's what you see here. Um, and, and then determine the final distance between the rows. Now we look at the solar azimuth angle. 
Taylor Azimuth angle from eight to four. We're going to read from this uh, bottom, the bottom row of numbers. Uh, this is what uh, I was talking about when we looked at the solar sun path chart that we got from the University of Oregon um, website, uh, Solar Monitoring Lab. Their chart will say zero to 360 across here. Um, if you want these numbers, you'll have to put in a negative azimuth, and then it will show you east on this side and west on this side, <laughs> AM on this side and PM on this side. But uh, that may be something you want to do if you want to save yourself from, from adding in all these little digits up. This one's great. This is from the Jim Dunlop textbook. Um, and this one gives it to us straight and easy. 45, 50, 55 degrees is our azimuth angle. And for the sake of this equation, we don't really need to worry about the fact that it's a negative. Um, so let's just say 55 degrees because it's the, the actual angle width that we're concerned with. So now we have the angle and the hypotenuse. We need to figure out the difference between the rows, which is the adjacent, and that leaves us with the cosine function. So the cosine is, uh, so we say, uh, so ka toa, so that's C A H cosine adjacent hypotenuse. The cosine of 55 is 0.5735. I'm just punching that in the calculator. You punch in the 55, five, and then the cosine function button is going to give you this number. Um, adjacent is what we're solving for. Hypotenuse 66.76. Um, Multiplying both sides by 66.76 to solve for the adjacent gives us our distance between rows, which is 38.28. Um, if you do this on your calculator and you can work it step by step without rounding up or down, you may get something slightly different, 38.25 or 38.31 or something like that. Um, but this is just, it's hardly any different. Um, you might just if you were really designing an array in the field, or personally, I would probably just say, okay, uh, 38.4 to be safe. So, um, now, uh, Richard, I don't know if you want to take over. You want me to go ahead and go through this next ARC 10 bundle of slides? But you can go ahead. You're doing okay. great. All right. So, um, if we're really in a real world situation, we need to understand uh, the pitch of a roof, or not not really the pitch, the angle. Um, what's the angle of a roof if it's a uh, rise over run is, is what we're given? I think it, did I, let me see this. No, I didn't skip a slide. I should have had one in there defining what I'm talking about. In any case, when you look at a roof, uh, it comes uh, in, it, there's an angle like this. This is the rise, this is the run. So we have, a three three inch or three foot, however you do it, over 12 inch or 12 foot for this angle. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, um, exactly what I was just explaining. The rise over the run. So we got three inches. We're, we're working on a minuscule scale. So this is working on your toy model, not your real house. We're working with inches. <laughs> so three inches over 12 inches. There's three inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. Okay, so how do we solve for that angle? Um, we have the opposite and the uh, adjacent in this case, um, and we need the angle. So it's a little bit backwards, but it's all the same business. And luckily we have a fantastic scientific calculator that does all the really complicated stuff for us. Um, so we have the opposite and the adjacent. So out of all of these, what we the one we can work with is going to be the tangent. Um, so we know the tangent of the angle is angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So three over twelve is the tangent of the angle. So when we put that into a calculator, three divided by twelve, what we get is 0.25. Um, now we're not done there. That'd be easy if we were. Now we've got to use that again. Okay, so how do we solve for the angle? Now that we have um, this basic formula here, uh, three divided by 12 is the tangent of some angle. 
In order to convert from the tangent of an angle to the actual angle value, you use the arctan function. And that is uh, really easy to do. It's just a matter of, again, punching the right button on the calculator. Um, just this one I have plugged in the slides, so it should be real easy. Step one, divide three by 12 and get 0.25. So that was a three divided by 12. Everyone knows that, how to do that. Um, Step two, you're going to press the shift key, which, depending on your calculator, may look different. With this one, it's an arrow. Um, most scientific calculators actually have the word shift near the button. Um, so you press the shift key, and then step three, press the uh, tangent key or the arctan. So tangent turns into arctan when you press shift. You press shift, press the arctan, and there you go. That's the degree of your angle. It's just that easy. So we have a 14.04 um, degree angle. And we can plug that in right there. And this is where Richard's going to take over. Uh, we'll put this on a tilted roof. Um, where I think we're using a 2 over 12 roof uh, for his problem. Um, but this is where, um, this is the more complicated trigonometry here. And that's it. So, Richard, um, do I need to pass over the screen sharing to you? Yeah, go ahead and uh, make me a presenter. I'm going to figure out how to do that. Give me just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Look for my name under the uh, and right click and then uh, there make a presenter. Yeah. Thanks. There we go. Okay, I am now the presenter. So, as the presenter, I guess it's up to me to share my desktop, which I am doing now. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through uh, one final trig problem, which kind of brings in all these elements together and adds uh, an, uh, the additional element of how do you do row spacing on a rooftop that has a pitch when the modules themselves are pitched in relation to uh, the, the rooftop. So it's, uh, it's one more little layer of complexity that uh, uh, this is actually a, a question that I put forth to Sarah um, earlier this year when she was studying for the NADSEP uh, exam. She kept uh, uh, taking all these problems that I threw at her and just uh, doing great with them. And, and I thought, okay, if she can do this one last one, then there's nothing that can be thrown at her on the test <laughs> that should that shake her because this, this has it all. And uh, it looks pretty simple. Um, so you're at 40 degrees north. Um, you've got a 20 degree tilt of your modules. The modules themselves are 24 inches uh, wide. Um, and you're on a roof uh, that has a 412 pitch. And you don't want any shade between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So how far apart do you, do you space the road modules? Um, and uh, the, I guess uh, that was kind of an unfair question because the other assumption that needs to be made here is that the, the rooftop azimuth is facing true south. Okay? So we'll just uh, add that. So <clears throat> the first step is... Um, determining the, the length of one side of the first triangle, okay? So you know you've got this 20 degree tilt uh, relative to the rooftop, and you know that you've got a 24 inch wide module. So based on that, you've got the hypotenuse, you've got the angle theta, and you're solving for the opposite. So naturally, you'd use the, the, uh, uh, the sine function, okay? So plugging these values into, into the sine function, actually, let me uh, change my setup here real quick here so I can uh, slideshow, setup show, browse individual window, okay, jumping back in to here, all right, now I can calculator. <clears throat> Okay, um, so 20 sine 
in point 342, as indicated in the problem, um, and using algebra to move things around, uh, 24 over 1 multiplied it by both sides uh, means 24 times 0.342 means that, that opposite side, this height on the back side of this triangle is 8.2 inches. That is step one, okay? Um, hmm. My uh, PowerPoint is not responding. <laughs> Seems like you had this problem, Sarah. Moment ago. Yeah, okay. it, there was a little bit of a delay. Yeah, so, all right. I'm afraid that's not going to work for me. Okay, well, I'll uh, close that and expand this out as far as I can, and I'll just move on to the next slide. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, so we have 8.2 inches as the opposite side. Okay. Um, However, we're dealing with a rooftop that has a uh, 412 pitch, okay? So you just went through the arc tan function. Uh, we know that we uh, are, to use the tangent function. We know that we've got a, a rise of 4 inches for every 12 inches of run, okay? So 4 divided by 12 is, uh, I'll go ahead and pull this up, okay? 4 divided by 12 is 0.33 shift arc tan of 18.43 inches. Okay, so that's the slope of the rooftop. Now, <clears throat> we need to couple that with the altitude angle of the sun, okay, at 4 p.m. on the shortest day of the year. And this is the path that, uh, the, the chart that we're concerned with. So if we, uh, here. If we look at 4 p.m. here and bring it all the way down to the shortest day of the year, which is the winter solstice, December 24th, we can see that the altitude angle of the sun on this day is, for my calculations, I use 6 degrees. Okay? So, going back to our presentation, we can see <clears throat> that there's a 6 degree angle um, the altitude of the sun, okay, um, and there's a 18.4 uh, degree angle that is um, being applied to the rooftop. So the way you account for this is you actually bring down to zero the, the slope of the rooftop and you bring up the altitude of the sun by the, the same degrees that the, the, the roof was pitched at. So basically you take 6 degrees and you add 18.4 degrees and, and that brings you to 24.4 degrees. From the rooftop's perspective, because it's on a slope that's 18 degrees, the sun is 18 degrees higher in the sky. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, relative to the chart, so you take that 18.4 plus 6 degrees to get to a uh, sun altitude angle of 24.4 degrees, and it's from that that you determine your shadow length, okay? So the next step, then, would be, what is that shadow length? And it's the, the same process as, as before. You've got uh, an angle of 24.4 degrees. You have a opposite side that's 8.2 inches, then how long is the shadow between those two points? And basically you take the tan of 20, tangent of 24.4 degrees is equal to 8.2 divided by the adjacent, okay, which means that 0.4536 is equal to 8.2 divided by the adjacent. Move things around algebraically, multiply both sides by 1 over uh, 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 .436 and, uh, and both sides by, uh, uh, the, by the adjacent and you get the adjacent is equal to 8.2 divided by 4. .4536 and your shadow length is 18 inches. Okay? Um, however, we're not done yet. There's still another step and the next step 
is a function of the azimuth angle. Just like the example that uh, uh, Sarah provided, because these shadows are not occurring at solar noon, they're occurring at some other time, there's an azimuth angle that needs to be accounted for. And uh, so we knew it was 4 p.m. on the shortest day of the year, so I believed we chose the azimuth angle of negative 53 degrees, which uh, we don't care about ne negative and positive when we're talking about angles here because it's the absolute value of the angle that matters, and that's 53 degrees. So <clears throat> we have the, uh, the hypotenuse, and we have the angle theta, and we need the opposite. Um, excuse me, the adjacent. We need the adjacent side. So we use the cosine function. Cosine function says cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, so the cosine of 53 degrees is equal to the adjacent over 18.077 inches. So it's uh, uh, 0.601a is equal to the adjacent over 18.707, which means the adjacent is equal to 18.077 times 0.6018. So our adjacent length is 10.87, and that's how far apart these rows of modules need to be on a rooftop that has an 18 degree pitch uh, um, when the uh, solar altitude is uh, 6 degrees <laughs> and the backs of the modules are 18.2. That's the answer, 10.87. So I'm going to go view our participants here and view chat. Okay. That's what we have here. Now, I do want to point out that, you know, I'd like to say that this is the, the end of the road for trigonometry and that there isn't really nothing else that, you, that can be known about this in terms of uh, 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 row spacing, but uh, uh, it actually can be a bit more complex than this. You know, all of the examples that we provided uh, assume that the azimuth of the array is, is 180 degrees due south. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is it can be quite a bit more complex when you uh, have an array that is facing something other than due south. Um, we will have a part two to this uh, 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 presentation at some point in the future, uh, but in the meantime, if you want to kind of get a glimpse of, of uh, the uh, what the process is for correcting uh, uh, for that azimuth angle. We've got the photovoltaic systems textbooks from Jim Dunlop, and if you go to page 77, uh, he takes a stab at uh, his explanation for how to account for inner row spacing when you're dealing with an array that has an azimuth uh, other than, than due south. And basically, it's a, it's, it's a matter of, of doing a, a uh, um, Taking our example, if we had something other than due south, uh, we would do a, uh, a 4 p.m. calculation to determine the, the shadow length and a 8 a.m. calculation to determine the shadow length. Those shadow lengths would be different and therefore would uh, um, imply uh, a different net. We take the longer of the two. So um, we'll work on that material, but uh, uh, be on the lookout going forward. Uh, for a, uh, an actual micro course that you formally enroll in. It's totally free. It'll be on inner row shading that will require you to watch this video that you saw here tonight. Um, and uh, uh, we'll have a lot of other uh, elements to it um, and uh, something that you could potentially use as continuing education units or uh, to count as advanced training for photovoltaics. So something tangible. Are there any questions? Oh. Uh, okay, so we do have a question from Sam. He says, can you please explain again how and why the azimuth is important with respect to two adjacent rows? Okay. I have, I, the, uh, okay. I, have an, I have an illustration as well uh, when you're done. I, I just, it's not a drawing, but I, I think it might help a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, go for it, Sarah. Uh, okay. You can, uh, uh, you just I'll make it at the center. Let's see. And uh, 
Okay. This is just, okay. <laughs> All right, so let me put this in slideshow mode. Okay, shoot, there we go. All right, so um, at noon, when the azimuth is zero, uh, the sun is straight up in the sky. It is close to 90 degrees, as you could imagine. Uh, and if we have a row here or an array, uh, the, the shadow of that is going to be something like this. Uh, it's not going to be jagged, but <laughs> I'm used to scribbling with a pencil, and it works a lot better. So, um, so our shadow is going to be a fairly short shadow. Um, now, when the sun starts to set and the azimuth angle is like 45, 50, 60 degrees, um, the shadow becomes more like this. Okay, <laughs> that's a really bad drawing. Is is that it? Do you see what I'm saying though? Does that make sense? Let me color that in for you. Uh, as the azimuth changes, the shadow length changes as well. So you have to um, you have to adjust for that. Is that right, Richard? Yeah, that, that's basically it. That uh, you know, when you are at solar noon, um, you are perpendicular. Your array is, is, is lined up. There's no additional calculation required because there's no correction to the shadow length, okay? But when you're at something other than solar noon, you're, 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 you're calculating your shadow length based on the altitude of the sun at that time. That's how long the shadow is. But the, the, the shadow is coming at an angle, okay? which means that if you didn't do that second trigonomic function to using cosine to account for the distance between the rows and you just relied on the, um, uh, uh, the calculation that you derived from the first calculation, the, the tangent function, uh, then you'd be spacing your modules, uh, their rows, further apart than they needed to be, need, need to be okay? Uh, because the, the, um, the hypotenuse is always going to be longer than any other side in the right triangle. And, and uh, the distance, the physical distance between the arrays when you're dealing with a, a, a sun that's somewhere other than true south needs to be that uh, adjacent side. Um, so, you know, you could all day long use the solar noon calculation and, and never have shade on your modules ever, um, but uh, uh, you'd be... Uh, um, uh, Putting yourself, uh, well, actually, I take that back. Uh, there is a, I don't want to make a blanket statement like that because when the sun's really low in the sky, those shadow lengths can be pretty long. Yeah, so I'm not going to make a statement that says that uh, just go by solar noon and you'll always, you know, you'll never have shade on your modules. That doesn't make sense. Um, but, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a function of, consider this. So the shadow length, is the, um, uh, the, essentially the side view, okay? And the, uh, the cosine function to determine the spacing between the rows is a top-down view, okay? I don't know if that helps clarify it any, but uh, uh, at that steep angle, so I got a comment from, uh, let's see, but at that steep angle, you will hardly be producing Right. Power. Right. Uh, if you're referring to my square illustration, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I mean, as a as a solar designer, you're you're putting up the parameters. You're identifying your 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 solar window, right? Your uh, uh, your your the length of time during the day that that's meaningful to you. I know in Austin and Austin Energy, they require that there's no shading uh, for six continuous hours during the day. Um, a lot of authorities having jurisdiction require that there's no shading from, you know, like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, or 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So uh, it's, it's really, you know, all about just, just trying to nail down the design to make sure that you're getting full sun during the time that you want full sun. So even if, even if in those early morning hours and late afternoon hours there's not a lot of power to be gained, you know, um, 
So, all right. And 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 as far as it goes, this class that we're working on, um, uh, we're uh, uh, going to be working with some models with uh, lights and a little three-dimensional model to try to illustrate more clearly the how and the why and the what of, of inner row spacing. So Sam um, and everyone else, as soon as that class comes available, we're going to uh, uh, announce it uh, widely to everyone so you guys can go in, enroll for the class. Um, uh, <clears throat> okay, so Sam's indicating the study suggests that three times the panel has panel height on the horizontal plane. That is a rule of thumb, and um, I would say that it's really going to be a function of your, your latitude um, <laughs> as to, uh, um, but yeah, a, a rule of thumb is that you do, the, the distance between the rows should be three times the height of the, uh, the, the back of the modules from the horizontal plane. So um, sure, you can apply that rule of thumb, but uh, uh, when it comes to doing the calculation, you'll need to know how to do that as well. Sarah, you have something to add? No, well, I just, uh, this was something I wanted to put in the slides uh, shows, and I, and I, I didn't, uh, but uh, most people have seen this before, but uh, this sort of gives one more illustration of the change in the azimuth and whatnot uh, at different times of the year. Uh, and the way that the sun is always in the southern part of the sky, at least in the southern, I mean, in the northern hemisphere, uh, and the highest it will be is, is in the, at the summer solstice, the lowest at the winter solstice. It's just really helpful to really fully understand visually how this solar window works, which is what, what this is at any time the sun will be in the sky. Right, right. Um, so, okay, the, uh, the next solar MOOC uh, scheduled is for uh, Monday, and we've got uh, a guest lecturer uh, scheduled, uh, Jeff Gilbert, uh, who will be working on uh, verifying system design with a focus on uh, uh, string size calculations, you know, how to calculate for uh, high voltage and cold situations and low voltage and hot situations and, and uh, it should be really great. Um, we've got uh, requests rolling in from around the world, uh, uh, really meaningful uh, guest lectures. Uh, uh, we've got someone from uh, uh, Mexico who is going to be uh, presenting, and uh, uh, from India, and Colombia, and all over the U.S. Um, uh, it should be really, really great. So uh, uh, tune in. Monday night, 6 p.m., uh, we'll send the invitation out to everybody to uh, watch Jeff Gilbert from uh, 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 Azimuth uh, 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 Technologies. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So, uh, all right, Sarah, it looks like uh, someone's uh, talking about an app. Yeah, I remember just replying. Uh, it was just someone mentioning that the Sun Seeker is a great app for the iPhone, if you have a Droid, you can yeah. get the Sun Surveyor. Uh, same thing, ah, okay. pretty much. It's a really fun toy, just to go wherever. I mean, uh, anywhere you go, you can see a, a, an illustration of this, and I, I would suggest getting it. It's, I believe it's free. I might, I have a Droid, and I, I might have paid about three dollars for that app, but it's worth it just to have one more tool to uh, to to get a true visual understanding of how all this works. Right, right. And uh, Sam is uh, making a request that, uh, for a lecture on uh, wire gauge and overcurrent uh, protection calculations. So uh, 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 we will uh, uh, definitely be working on, on those. Um, in fact, uh, one of our next uh, micro courses that we'll be working on after uh, the, um, uh, once we're done with the inner row spacing, will be on conductor sizing. Um, so. Uh, you know, uh, by the end of this year, we expect to have quite a lot of, of, of micro courses to choose from. Our, uh, if you didn't see it, uh, when we launched the Summer Moves Academy, uh, we, we used the Khan Academy as an example for, for you know, what we hope to achieve with this, and that is just a, a vast selection of, of meaningful content, little courses that you can take and get credit for um, that are all free. Um, so. Uh, be on the lookout for those as they roll out. At any rate, 
Uh, Sarah, I believe uh, you're going to have to close this out because you are the host. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Do you want me to stop recording first? <laughs> uh, you can uh, just end the session and it'll stop recording. All right. Okay. Good night, everybody.